life surprises us and it challenges us and it puts us into these states of survival sometimes and so i guess for me what i've been really exploring is like learning how to love that part without judging it learning how to just self-soothe and support myself through the process of certain traumas resurfacing and just being with that this is awakened love the podcast and i'm your host angel this is a space where we get real real about sex love and awakening so strap in let's go deep What's up, beautiful awakened beings? It's just me today for a solo episode, a little bit of a life update. Um, I think it's been a little while since I did a life update. I, I believe the last time I did a life update was after my dieta and then engagement and 30th. Wow, that was the real time. Uh, so much expansion. And I don't know if I shared this on the podcast. I can't recall exactly what I shared, but I remember feeling at that time like, whoa, how good can I stand it? Can I allow this much beauty and joy in my system without blocking it or sabotaging it or pushing it away? Uh, and I knew that that was my work at that time. And what I was also pretty acutely aware of, as I would say to friends when they would be like, how are you? I'd, I would say, you know, I'm really, really good right now. And I recognize life has its seasons, it has its ups and downs. And right now I'm in a really expansive up period and my work is just to not block it. Uh, and I would say, you know, the last couple of months, maybe that's too long to attribute, the last month or so, just kind of coming out of it the last week or so, has been more of a lull, more of a low. And I kind of wanted to share that because I think it's important to, as a creator, uh, share both sides of the coin, you know, not be afraid to share our joy and our pleasure and our radiance, which I think as women, uh, particularly, or people with pussies, we can feel like if I share my beauty and my joy, will that make another woman or person feel bad about themselves? Will it like hurt other people? And so I think there's a real beauty to shining and sharing when we're in our joy and not being ashamed of that and being able to celebrate fully and simultaneously to also be able to share when we're having a bit of a lull, a bit of a blah or trauma resurfacing or dealing with hard stuff or challenging life circumstances because life, if you haven't noticed, just keeps lifing, <laughs> just keeps happening. It's a wild and surprising adventure. And yeah, I, I think something I've really been uh, supporting myself through and, and embodying at a deeper level is recognizing that whether I'm up or whether I'm down, there's value for me in all the cycles of life. And also this has been the really big one. I can still be of deep value. That was really, has been really revelatory for me working with the last little parts and pieces that bought into the misbelief that somehow I have to be always up, always perky, always bright, always shiny, always rocking it in order to be uh, a worthy leader, in order to be a great healer, a facilitator and coach. And what I've realized is through experience, that just isn't true. That's such a story. Actually, when I'm in the depths of it, uh, oftentimes some of the most powerful sessions that I deliver uh, and what I hear time and time again that's been really comforting from the women in my community is just the gratitude they have for the realness because in that we remember that we're not alone and also we remember wow we can experience heights and ecstasy and expansion and also we can experience lulls and difficulty and trauma resurfacing and it's all okay it's all just part of the wild and surprising adventure that is life uh, so yeah, it's been definitely an interesting ride. We had to move out of, had to, caught myself there. <laughs> we were invited to <laughs> move out of our uh, the home we were in, the beautiful A-frame up in the mountains. Uh, the owner wanted to sell it and wanted to do so really quickly because of some sort of a tax implication for him. Um, and so we wanted to like honor that. We understood the situation. We didn't want him to like lose a bunch of money. So we just very quickly, after visiting Australia for the first time in three years, uh, had to come home and pack all of our stuff up. And so it was kind of an interesting juxtaposition of being in Australia and having such a nourishing, soul nourishing time, getting to see my family after 
three years and my new niece who I didn't meet yet, Ramsey, who's also my goddaughter, who's just the most, and I'm not even biased, precious, delightful, joy-filled, amazing baby. The first time I met her, uh, she was in her mom's arms and I looked at her and I looked at her in the eyes and she looked at me for a second and she smiled and laughed and just stuck her arms out to me, which I've never had a baby respond to me like that, to feel so connected so quickly and to be like such a yes. Uh, so that was super powerful to get to see my family and connect with this new little being, this new member of the family. So it was feeling so relaxed and laid back as the Australian lifestyle is, loving all the healthy food, seeing all my friends and fam, just like this beautiful relaxed lifestyle, which by the way, it's interesting. I find myself more and more attracted to that lifestyle the older I get. I remember when I was living on the Gold Coast at 17 and moving to Sydney and just so excited to get out. I couldn't wait to get out. And whenever I would return home over the years as I was living in LA and London and Bali and Sydney and (laughs) everywhere but there, I would always be like, oh, I could never live here. And then now, you know, I don't imagine, I love Colorado so much and the plan is to stay here. And I just appreciate it more when I go back. I'm like, oh, I really, maybe one day I could live here again. It is so special. So just the beautiful waterfalls. Like my brother took us on this amazing hike where we had to hike through the river and we hiked for, I don't know, like an hour and a half, two hours through the river, through the rainforest to this amazing waterfall with no one else there. Just such incredible natural beauty. Another time Patrick and I hiked through, um, Sadly, the Northern Rivers area around Byron Bay, there's been some really, really bad flooding there. And so there was still a little bit of flooding that we kind of had to wade through between the hiking path, the mountain or the hill and the beach at Tallows. And we kind of waded through this really questionable water where we're like, oh, should we be in this water? I don't know, but we did it. Um, And we got to the other side and we had the entire stretch of Tallows Beach. I'm pretty sure it's Tallows. It's like the other side of the lighthouse. Um, for people who know the area without a huge stretch of beach. It's normally so packed, not a soul on it. Got to dance around on the beach naked and swim in the water naked and have this amazing thunderstorm moment um, together. It was super beautiful. Uh, So then to come home, it didn't, and back into the home that we were living in and to have to pack up super quickly and move out and not really know what our next step was going to be. It was really interesting because at first I was like, oh, I'm really relaxed. I don't like when I first found out we were boarding the flight to Australia and I really was just I felt really relaxed. And then when we got home, I started to be like, "Mm, this is stressful. (laughs) And of course it is right. Like anyone who moves houses, it's not the funnest thing ever. It's a little bit stressful. Uh, But I started to just feel like this dark cloud coming over me. I was just like, whoa, a few days in to packing, I was like, damn, I feel really low, like lower than I've felt since my partying days when I was like coming down off God knows what, had no idea what I was doing with my life, like confused, lost, alone, isolated overseas, just, you know, had every reason to feel like life was falling apart, but it was such a strange unsettling in a way feeling to to touch that low and to feel that low but then to look around and be like my life is better than it's ever been and so that was kind of confusing I was just like huh what is going on here interesting (laughs) for those of you that have heard the latest episode with my bestie Rachel Pringle you'll hear that we were talking about that that you know the ability to look at what we're going through and go hmm interesting, even when it's really uncomfortable or difficult. Um, And it was actually Patrick, my husband to be, that pointed it out to me. He said, you know, because I said to him flippantly as we were packing up and I'd been kind of tracking my emotions and letting him in on it and saying, you know, I'm feeling really low. And I was like, it's interesting because I I should be totally relaxed. I moved, I think, 13 times before I was 12. I'm used to this. And he was like, yeah, or you're traumatized. Um, And I was like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, (laughs) hello. And so I just kind of went into this deep process of working with another layer of just unresolved childhood stuff. This is the game that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. And really it does. I think that it doesn't have to be a bad thing, but really at every level of experience, whether we're feeling a low or we're feeling a high, 
when we're touching our own edges, we're usually bringing up the experiences from our past that created those edges or glass ceilings for pleasure or rock bottoms touching the trauma again, the edges that were created through our experiences. Like life will stretch us to touch those edges. And I think the beautiful spiritual intelligence innate in that is that it gives us the opportunity to kind of circle back to the parts of us that still feel traumatized, disconnected, isolated, and that we're not aware of. And these experiences of extreme joy or extreme pain, or sometimes just a random Tuesday, bring us into contact with and give us that opportunity. So yeah, I did not expect that. I was like, damn, (laughs) okay, here we go. A little bit of trauma resurfacing. And of course, also the last time we moved out of our house so suddenly was because it had burned down and we lost everything. Um, And so there was a little bit of that. And it's interesting to feel the part of me that was like, oh man, aren't I done with this yet? And I kind of always have that part. And I'm curious for those of you listening or watching with me on YouTube, do you resonate? Have you got Um, certain wounds or traumas or things that get triggered? And is there the part of you that comes up and it's like, oh, this tape again. And it's like so unhelpful, you know, (laughs) but to be able to love even the part that judges because it wants to be done, but also to love the wounded part. And I think a theme I've been really sharing with a lot of my clients lately is this idea that we don't necessarily get rid of the stories. Like if we have a deep story of unworthiness, if we have a deep story that we can't trust anyone, to support us. That was a big one for me. It's not that that will ever go away. It's just our relationship to the story changes. And I think what's good about acknowledging that is it gets us out of trying to fix things with our spiritual practice and gets us more into like, how do I learn to love this as it is? And therefore, how do I learn to love myself better with all of my idiosyncrasies and traumas and quirks? Like, how do I just learn to love who I am and and how I am? And that actually changes it. It's our relationship to the difficult experience, the trauma or the past pain that is the empowering thing because we can't go back and change what happened. And trauma does change us. And sometimes we're able to work with that by working with how we relate to what happened to us. And I think that that for me, at least has been a big sigh of relief. We don't have to fix it. We don't have to get rid of it. We just get to know it even better so that when it comes up, you can catch it quicker. So, you know, sometimes the people that love us know this even better than us. And I think that Patrick and I had a lot of conversations about this processing. I'm so grateful to have such a beautiful human being in my life who is also super wise you know he surprises me sometimes with his wisdom i know he's a really intelligent man i joke he's like my vocab my um thesaurus i'm always like a dictionary i'm like what does this word mean what does that word mean i would consider myself pretty articulate but this man is like on another level i know that but sometimes just the depth of his wisdom really surprises me um Because, you know, he doesn't necessarily have a traditional spiritual practice. Although that being said, he practices yoga every morning. He just does it differently to me. Um, And yet I think it's beautiful to leave space in our lives if we're even if we're a really devoted spiritual practitioner to let people surprise us because everyone has this wisdom in them. And we just had a lot of conversations and around this and like what was coming up for me. And he pointed out, he was like, you know, I think instability um, is your kryptonite. And I was kind of working with that. I was like, I don't know, but I feel so resilient because I do believe that you can plant me anywhere, plant me in ice, plant me in shit, and I'll find a way to grow. And he's like, yeah, you're really good at surviving. He's like, you fought your scrappy as fuck. Like you could, you fought your way to have everything you have you fought for. And for you to really thrive, Stability and home is so important for you. And I was like, oh, you're so right. That Taurus moon, uh, there's a difference between like when I'm surviving and struggling. And you know what? Also, sometimes life will just call on us to be in a mode where we have to activate. And the truth is like things aren't always going to be certain. I'm sure those of you watching or listening right now maybe have stuff in your life that you didn't expect circumstances arise, whether it's a difficult financial situation or a surprise move or a divorce or the loss of a loved one, like life surprises us and it challenges us and it puts us into these states of survival sometimes. And so I guess for me, what I've been really exploring is like learning how to love that part without judging it, learning how to just self soothe and support myself through the process of certain traumas resurfacing and just being with that and knowing that some of my traumas from my past, I mean, 
all of my experiences from my past, they stay with me. And so I'm not going to be immune from them. From them. I'm just going to get to know them better so that I can love them better and take care of them better so that they don't potentially hijack me or I'm not unaware that they're there. Because that's when it's difficult. When, like me, you're all of a sudden feeling really low, really down, and you just don't know why. Um, and it's actually like, oh, there's some, some content surfacing here to be loved and to be felt. And there's the flip side of that. Sometimes I've had times in life in meditations where there are just tears streaming down my face and there's no reason, quote unquote, for them. It's just energy moving and being super present with that can be beautiful too. It's kind of funny how there really are no rules. (laughs) And I think that that's kind of the beautiful thing. And those of us that are mystics at heart, we get more from the questions, I think, than the answers because it's like good questions tend to just promote even more questions. <laughs> so if you can tell, I'm deep in the questioning and the inquiry and the observing and the experiencing and just like rolling around in what were some really difficult activations of my nervous system and some just like also remembering things that I'd totally forgotten and blocked out um, and being able to kind of like circle back around and tend to those parts. And what I will say is it's easy for me to talk about it now. I'm feeling integrated and resourced and like it's um, like I've understood it and learned from it and I'm kind of coming out the other side. Uh, So I also just want to say that it wasn't like, didn't pop out fully articulate and formed. It was messy and confusing and difficult and it required gaining support and um, a lot of processing and a lot of feeling and a lot of feeling fucking confused and having no idea what the hell is going on. So if that's you, that's all, you know, it's all part of it as well. So yeah, that's kind of where I've been at. I do feel now Colorado's spring is on its way and the birds are singing and the plants are thriving. And I kind of felt my own energy move in that cycle, this kind of long but fertile winter that I had walked through starting to shift into into spring and shift into opening. And so, yeah, I guess what I learned from that is just A, that there's value in it all, (laughs) whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, it's always valuable if we're present. And B, that I am still of value, even when I'm not feeling my best. And that's great too. It doesn't mean that you have to like, we don't have to be perfect and perky and bright and put together in order to be of value. And so I think that was really powerful for me. And I just wanted to share that if there's anyone who's going through it right now, um, if you feel like as a woman or a pussy having person, you have to be always on, always bright, always perky in order to be worthy of being a leader, in order to be good at your job, in order to be a worthy partner, in order to be whatever insert identity here, insert role here, just to know that maybe that's not true. Maybe you can question that. Maybe you're an amazing wife, even when you're a mess. And maybe you're an incredible mother, maybe even a better mother when you show your kids that they don't have, they don't have to be perfect, that you can be messy and you can do hard things and you can stumble and you can stand back up and that you can be present to your own healing process instead of sweeping it under the rug. Like what if, what if we're actually even better moms, wives, coaches, humans for for experiencing the traumas we've experienced and walking through the healing of those difficult experiences as they resurface as they tend to do uh, throughout life so that's where i'm at pd and i are at a very exciting juncture um as far as like what's happening now where are we where are we living we're still in boulder um and we are in a temp spot and there are some exciting things on the horizon and I'm just going to keep them to myself until they've manifest. That's a little trick that Patrick and I use is that when we have a really exciting idea or an exciting thing on the horizon or exciting manifestation, whatever it is, we keep that energy in for ourselves and we water it and feed it. And we only tell people that are absolutely essential to the watering or the growing of that seed. And then once the seed has blossomed and it's ready, then you tell everyone, then you share it, you let people support you, all of that. And so um, I have found that that's been a really powerful practice 
uh, I could recommend it. If you have a really amazing idea brewing, you might notice that previously you may have had big ideas and big excitements and then you share them with a bunch of people and then you lose the excitement. <laughs> and then everyone's asking you like, oh, how's that thing going? How's that thing going? And you know, you're like, oh, it's not going, whatever. It just avoids you getting into that. You keep all the energy and the excitement and the juice flowing in the direction it's meant to, which is into the project, into the idea, into the creation itself, rather than leaking out into conversation until it's ready to blossom and be shared. So I'm gonna keep the energy in and I'm excited perhaps uh, in the next couple of months, I'll do another life update and Lord knows where will we, where will we be then <laughs> on this wild and surprising adventure that is life. So if you're listening on YouTube, I'd love to know, comment below, like what season are you in in life right now? And what is valuable about the season that you're in right now? What are you learning? How are you growing? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Thank you for tuning in and sharing your most precious resource, your time, your energy, your attention. I love you guys all so much and I will speak to you real soon. That's it for today, Awakened One. And just a quick thank you from me. Thank you for gifting us with your most precious resource, your time and attention so that we can make this world a more awakened place. And if we're not friends on Instagram yet, then we absolutely should be. So come on over and say hello at Angelica Alana and I'll see you there and see you next week.